Mm-hmm. NIL is about retention, not recruitment. Yeah. And now it is in recruitment from a standpoint of the, the players have to know that there's something available <laughs> yeah. to them. But the places that have used NIL as a recruitment inducement, it hasn't yeah. worked. Creates issues. Anytime you have so much success as as Washington's had this season, a lot of other programs come calling, right? For the coaches, for the players. Yeah. Uh, we were talking, it's why you know, Nick Saban always has, tur- has coordinator turnover, right? Everyone yeah. wants the coaches and the, how's that process been with all the success that Washington's had since you've been here? Well, you know, the, we can say what we want about money and about anything else. It, it is a people business yeah. and it's a relationship business. Business. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's one thing to sign the contract and have the contract, and there's a number associated with it. It's another thing to be able to win. How have uh, the contract discussions gone with Coach Tabor? We'll do a deal that UW's never seen before. What do you think still needs to happen to, to be a top four program in the country consistently year after year? What's up, guys? Welcome to the Next Up Podcast. I'm Adam Brenneman. We are in New Orleans where UW is playing in the Sugar Bowl against Texas. It's the Sunday before the game, and we're about to sit down. We, we just sat down with UW head coach Kaylin DeBoer. We're about to sit down with UW AD Troy Dannon. Troy Dannon has been on the job now at UW for a few months, and he's overseeing one of the best football programs in the country. I'm going to talk to Troy about all things college football realignment, moving to the Big Ten, NIL, and Coach DeBoer's new contract. Before we get to the interview, please subscribe to this podcast. If you're on YouTube, subscribe below. If you're listening on audio, Spotify, Apple, leave a five-star review, share it with a friend. All your guys' support allows me to go around the country like we are in New Orleans right here talking to UW AD, Troy Dennett. Let's go talk to Troy. Next up. What's up, guys? It's Adam Brenneman. It's now holiday season. You guys are looking for gifts. I'm telling you right now, check out our merch store. We have super high-quality merch. My favorite is this college football tee. If you're a college football fan, you need this thing. We have college basketball tees, tons of merch for college sports fans. Use the code ADAMB15 for 15% off at checkout. Go get some college football merch and check out our other styles today. How's your uh, how's the, the time at Washington been so far? A new, relatively new job? Yeah. Well, you, you don't normally step into the fortune right. of an unbeaten football team. <laughs> when you change jobs you know normally these jobs are open because they're, they're broken and that's I, a great point and I, i've just been trying to stay out of the way you know f- figure out what we need to do to support the success yeah. that's going on yeah but uh you know this is and obviously figuring out a way to support the coach but yeah but we we uh, i'm trying not to make any mistakes trying trying to uh really learn the culture because yeah. You know, culture eats everything else for breakfast. You've heard the line before, yeah. but it's, I think Washington's the greatest example of why that's mm-hmm. true. So yeah. trying to learn its culture so I can be a, a, a good part of its culture growing, yeah. growing and going forward. Well, what's it like you get a job like this? You just mentioned uh, you know, the football program's having a historic season. Uh, what's it like, what are you doing the, your first few weeks on the job? Are you evaluating all the programs? What kind of goes into being an AD in the first few weeks at a Power 5 school? Well, I would say in a normal situation, yeah. it would be spending time with all the coaches, spending time as much time as you can with the staff, mm-hmm. getting to know one another, fig- figuring out where the landmines are, figuring out yeah. where the, the real areas of success are, mm-hmm. and, and, and really trying to figure out what, what's your 90-day plan or what's yeah. the six-month plan. Coming in the middle of the football season, it's a little out of cycle for these jobs. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, for, for me, and, and this was one of those where not only had Jen left, but the day-to-day football operations person had left. So yeah. I've kind of been almost a, <clears throat> more of a football AD yeah. uh, for these first few weeks, given what's going on. And, mm. and so uh, while I've been meeting folks, I've been spending a lot of time with football. Yeah. And, and, uh, and obviously the, the other nuances of this particular job, the breakup of the Pac-12, yeah. a lot of litigation there and, and the transition mm. to the Big Ten, so things that you don't normally deal with, I would say have been taking the vast majority of my time. Yeah. Uh, that's why the, the, the good news uh, was, was there's a strong staff there yeah. uh, and, and a good culture. And so they didn't need me to come in and help run the thing, if you yeah. will, uh, yeah. so I can get up to speed on the areas that, yeah. that are gonna be really important going forward. When you did that initial evaluation or got to know the football program, what was the thing that surprised you the most about, about what Coach DeBoer has, has built here? So the one thing I, I, I maybe start with what wasn't a surprise, yeah. and, and you know the, uh, and I had this at Tulane. I had a, had a coach who'd won at the lower levels, mm-hmm. and and w- who was just a winner, won yeah. every place he'd been, and essentially had had mowed the grass and painted the line. <laughs> and there's such great value in that. And I walked in 
thinking that they were going to appreciate the game, appreciate mm-hmm. the opportunities. You know, it's kind of like I can't believe what I've had have yeah. around me, and yeah. and that that was true, and so that was a uh, mm-hmm. that was very pleasant to walk into. <laughs> uh, you know what I what I was maybe surprised at was, you know, Kalen's been there had been there really one season, one yeah. in, one season in five games when I got there. But that culture permeating from the top mm-hmm. down to everybody, to the last analyst, yeah. to everybody that has their hand in football, mm-hmm. what, that, there was that culture. There was a humility in the program. I, yeah. It was almost standing on the sidelines, and I'm a sideline guy. Yeah. I, you're uh, not in the suites. You're not, not in the suite. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the sideline. Yeah. And, you know, and I want to get to know the players as soon as I could as well. But, but almost disarmed by how calm everyone was. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the... In the 36 to 33 game with Oregon, right? This decided on a missed yeah. kick in the last play of the game. I just didn't see any emotion out of Kalen. Yeah. And it just, I was like shocked. Yeah. And when things went bad on the field, I didn't see guys coming off the field throwing their helmet and mm-hmm. swearing and, and get all bent out of shape. And I think that's why yeah. we won eight games. Since I've been there, we won eight games where we essentially decided on the last possession of the yeah. game. Uh, and because when you have that mentality and, and you have that humility and you have that that uh, poise under pressure, yeah. you can have success in pressure-packed situ- situations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just talked to Coach DeBoer about this a little bit, but curious to hear your take on it. Um, anytime you have so much success as, as Washington's had this season, a lot of other programs come calling, right? For the coaches, for the players. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking, it's why you know, Nick Saban always has, tur- has coordinator turnover, right? Everyone yeah. wants the coaches and the, and I'm sure at, at every level, head coach, coordinators, assistant coaches, you know, everyone wants what Washington has right now. Uh, how do you go about, you know, that's your ultimate job, right? You're, you're keeping your, your staff intact and being able to have the resources to do it. Uh, how's that process been with all the success that Washington's had since you've been here? Well, you know, when you say what we want about money and about anything else, it, it is a people business yeah. and it's a relationship business. Mm-hmm. And so when you're trying to fast track, build relationships, I yeah. want for, in Coach DeBoer's case, he needs to know who he's gonna be working with yeah. and, and whether I can be a good enough partner for him to continue to have success. Mm-hmm. And so we had to kind of fast track that yeah. because you know, I, I knew what was gonna happen at the, at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, coaching contracts, whether it's a head coach, assistant, anybody else, you know, it's, it's one thing to sign the contract and have the contract and there's a number associated with it. It's another thing to be able to win. Yeah. And you know, they can get that contract someplace mm-hmm. where they can win. Yeah. I need to make sure they can win. So mm-hmm. as much for me in this, besides getting a deal done, if you will, mm-hmm. which is what I think the public focuses on, yeah. it's what are the resources that I need to make sure that the program gets in order to be able to win. Yeah. Because you know, I know there's a lot of money involved. These guys want to win. Mm-hmm. And, and if they can't win, they'll go someplace they can't yeah. win. For sure. And so uh, making sure that they know I'm as committed to winning. Mm-hmm. And I said this when I got hired. If you're not win it, in it to win it, get out of it. Yeah. And everybody has to be committed to winning. And there's a holistic part, and, and the holistic part's important. And in Washington, yeah. the neat thing about it is they care as much what happens off the field as they do what happens on the field. Yeah. But don't underestimate how important it is to everybody at the university in this side of the department and inside the program to win. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I see, I, you play, you know, I, I know what everybody goes through. Yeah. The grind they go through, the commitment that they have, mm-hmm. and, and you know, there's the spoils of all of that is winning. Yeah, for sure. It's walking off the field and dancing in the locker room. Mm. And so I want to make sure we can be in that position every yeah. single day. And winning makes those conversations much easier, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a double-edged sword, right? The more you win, the more people are after you. But you know what? I, I'm at Washington because Tulane won the Cotton Bowl last no year. Doubt. Yep. And, and so, you know, it, there is a point at which, you know, people aspire, mm-hmm. you know, and, and success brings aspirations to reality. Mm-hmm. You know, at, at the same time, particularly with a head coach, you know, I, I don't want to go in any place. Yeah. You know, I, this is a top 10 job in the country yeah. and I need to make sure it's a top 10 job and yeah. that if he aspires to go be the coach of the Dallas Cowboys, man, I, yeah. I, can't, I maybe <laughs> can't beat that. Yeah. But then there's not another college job. Yeah. And, and you know, when it comes to the staff and Kill, and I've talked a little bit about this, you know, you want to keep, he's kept that nucleus together mm-hmm. for a long time at a lot of different stops, mm-hmm. but there is always a point in time at which you know the bird needs to leave the nest. Yeah, you know, coaches. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hiring a, a deputy athletic director right now, and I, I, in the interview, I said my job is to prepare you to be an athletic director in mm-hmm. three years. 
Yeah. You know, so we, we have to have that mentality of continue to grow people professionally so they can move up and on if yeah. they want to. You mentioned some of the resources needed to win at Washington. Mm -hmm especially with the move to the Big Ten, right? The competition gets even harder. You're not yeah. competing with just, it's now Ohio State and Michigan and Penn State and uh, still Oregon and, and USC. What, what, what are those resources that you wanted to improve upon when you got here for the football program? Well, the, I suppose the biggest surprise to me is what we were, maybe what we weren't doing in a tr nutrition standpoint. Got it. Yeah. And, and so there's some things, you know, building the kitchen so we can mm. do 21 <laughs> meals a week and just yeah. some of those things that, may not be sexy, but are critically important. Mm -hmm. And not just to football, but to everybody in the department. Uh, you know, in, in this environment, and I am. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I think the people that are struggling are the people that didn't want to embrace NIL mm -hmm. at first, mm -hmm. resisted it maybe for philosophical reasons, yeah. whatever the case. Now they want to get on board and maybe, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe they're not in as much control as they should have been. One yeah. thing UW did was get it behind it and support it from day one. Yeah. We did the same thing at Tulane. Yeah. And, and I think those programs that did that find themselves maybe in a little bit of an advantageous position today. Yeah. But there's more coming. Yeah. It's, it, you know, the, the next generation of this is either gonna be employment or revenue sharing. Mm -hmm. So how do we start preparing for that? Yeah. You know, uh, at, at Tulane we did our NIL education a year before the rule passed because it looked like mm -hmm. the rule was gonna eventually yeah. pass. So what are we doing now in a year or two ahead of where Maybe there's revenue sharing yeah. or, or whatever that model change is. Yeah. I, I want to dive into a little bit of what you just said there uh, because it's just such a great topic now in college sports. And you're at the center of it, right, at one of the best programs in the country uh, that's doing a great job yeah. at NIL. I was just telling Coach DeBoer, I was talking to um, some people at the Peach Bowl, and, and people were mentioning how great of a job Washington has done, done with NIL as kind of an example of, of what it should look like. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you mentioned embracing it early, but what, what else do you think has gone into you guys having a great structure in place for NIL to be able to compete with all the programs in the country? You guys know I love football. In this football season, I've been trying to find a new way to bet on sports. I'm sick of using casinos, the traditional way to do it. And I found the best way to do it, had to tell you guys about it. It's on Cut. Cut is the game-changing social betting platform. Look no further. This is where you got to be. It's a peer-to-peer -peer betting playground. On Cut, you can bet against your friends, bet against fellow fans on sports, politics, pop culture, and much more. It's much better than just regular sports books. Cut handles payments, so no more chasing friends for money, no more talking to a bookie, hassle-free betting at its finest. And the best part, no more faceless casinos. It's personal and it's exciting. You can customize odds for what you want to bet on. Tailor your bets with fully customizable odds. It's your game in your rules on cut. Also, we get lower VIG on cut. Much lower VIG for a better betting experience for everybody, more winnings and less hassle. One of my favorite parts of cut is the social features. You can dive into group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head -head history and user profiles. It's like having a group of friends on a betting platform and betting against them if you want. Your betting experience just got a major upgrade when you use cut. And I didn't even mention that, the rewards that you get on the cut app. You get cash back every time you bet against your friends. The more you bet, the more you earn. It is a win-win for everyone. Cut is legal in 40 plus states, which I love because I'm traveling so much, it's hard to find sports books that are legal in most states. 40 plus states for cut, including those without traditional sports books. So put your money where your mouth is. It's time to fire on sports on the best new app. I've been looking for a long time and I found it. It's on cut. Use my promo code Adam B and get a 10% deposit match at cut.com. That's cut.com, K-U-T-T.com. Use my code Adam B for a 10% deposit match when you deposit money. Again, cut.com, K-U-T-T, get a 10% deposit match when you use my code Adam B. And guys, supporting our sponsors helps us so much helps me personally be able to travel around the country and bring on amazing guests so go support cut today what else do you think has gone into you guys having a great structure in place for nil to be able to compete with all the programs in the country well i think kaylin's philosophy uh, and it's one that i shared walking in the door mm -hmm. nil is about retention not recruitment yeah and now it is in recruitment from a standpoint of the, the players have to know that there's something available <laughs> yeah. to them but the places that have used NIL as a recruitment inducement, yeah. uh, it, it hasn't yeah. worked. Creates issues. <laughs> and, yeah. and those, you know, the, the kids who chase the money, you know, yeah. it, there's more to it than chasing the bag yeah. uh, to have it success when you get there. Yeah. But to be able to reward those who have success, yeah. and and uh, you know, no different than I'm trying to reward coach with another contract, right? Yeah. You know, and and make sure that the again the spoils I talked about winning. There, there are other rewards now they're available and, yeah. and making sure that those are there. So I think that was the key. Uh, and I, I think the other key, at least with, with the, uh, the collective that, that exists at Washington, uh, 
there is a philosophical agreement with those who run the collective and those inside the athletic yeah. department yeah. about uh, what the point is about you know the type of student that, that we want to recruit and retain here. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think part of it goes to the Adidas partnership. Yeah. You know, uh, we're the first Adidas school that's been in, in the CFP. And, and they've they've done some great things with Rome and with Michael and mm. you know those are NIL opportunities yeah. that weren't available a few years ago. So you need your partners. It's not just the collective. You need your yeah. partners to embrace it and be behind it as well. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the revenue sharing, employment, whatever it looks like with NIL uh, in a couple of years. What do you think? You know, fast forward to twenty twenty seven. What does college football look like then? So. I'm going to give you a broad answer because I've been trying my best to not get deposed. I'm going to I'm going to replay this for right. 2027. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so there there will be uh, the the financial rewards, financial benefits, uh -huh. the financial gains that come through college athletics will find their way to the student athletes' hands one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't think employment happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I I do think the and whether it's, you know, you could look at the Austin Award right now and say mm -hmm. that's a form of revenue sharing. It's, yeah. it's got an academic component. I think if it, you would think of, of uh, athletics in that sense that the Austin Award would grow. Maybe or maybe not, there's an academic component to it, but the, the ability for, for much larger amounts of money uh, yeah. to come under Austin. Does it replace NIL? It's not gonna replace NIL. Yeah. You, NIL won't go away and in place we'll see revenue sharing. It'll be mm -hmm. revenue sharing plus NIL. Yeah. But, I think NIL will be a much reduced factor. If you go back, let's go back maybe 10 years ago now mm -hmm. when cost of attendance came in place. I remember coaches flipping out. You know, we give 6,000 a year in cost of attendance and that's a uh, rival gives 7,000. We won't get a kid to come to school here. Yeah. We don't talk about cost of attendance yeah, anymore. It's <laughs> and so I, I think, you know, NIL is that yeah. way. You know, the pendulum was released mm -hmm. and it went all the way to the other side. Yeah. But NIL will be less of a focus and the NIL maybe would be more, I think, the intended mm -hmm. uh, outcome of NIL, which yeah. is corporate partners and yeah. business relationships. Real NIL deals. Right. Real <laughs> NIL, if you will, yeah. not, yeah. not uh, a pseudo pay for play. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about you know, conference realignment mm -hmm. and everything that's happening in college football right now. You guys moving to the Big Ten. Um, the the Pac-12 essentially being no more, <clears throat> whatever ends up happening with it. What do you think happens in the future with conference realignment? Does uh, you know? D does it continue? Do, is there more realignment coming? Do, is there super conferences coming? Is there Power Five breaking off from uh, you know from the Group of Five? What do you think makes the most sense in the future? I think there's an equal chance of all of those things. Yeah. I, I I do think the one thing conferences, uh, from a traditional how we look at a conference standpoint. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be scheduling baseball as yeah. a conference, for yeah. example, or softball yeah. as a conference. And, you know, most of us, like with golf and tennis right now, we, we have a conference championship, but we play some yeah. in, what in proximity. I think you will see that with many more sports. Mm -hmm. uh, I think conferences, the influence uh, will maybe focus more on football and basketball. There may be conference championships. Yeah. Uh, but again, to reduce the travel, yeah. uh, to reduce the uh, time away from school, uh, just from an economic standpoint, yeah. you know, it's millions of dollars in travel costs that yeah. burden I don't Crazy. know anybody <laughs> needs, right? Uh, you know, I, I think the more interesting piece uh, that I don't fully have a read on right now is what happens to CFP yeah. and what happens to the governance of football. Football is the only sport that's not governed out of the NCAA. Mm -hmm. Well, it's got, rather it's governed out of the NCAA, but the championship in, yeah. in, in, is not. Yeah. Uh, I. I I fully believe that, that uh, uh, football will find its way from a governance standpoint outside of the NCAA. Yeah. Uh, whether that's under the CFP umbrella or, or some other umbrella. Yeah. You know, I don't think you can uh, untangle football from the rest of the, the uh, mm -hmm. sports in a, in, a, yeah. in a department. I Some people talk about football incorporating separately from, from the university. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm, I'm there yeah, on what that is. Raising venture capital. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, you know, uh, Title Title IX is still a factor. Mm -hmm. And just because you say I have a 2080 or uh, I have an LLC over mm -hmm. here that's that's governing football, that doesn't relieve you from the Title, title IX, IX and the equity pieces. Yeah. So uh, I don't know that I believe that's going to happen. Yeah. 
I do think there will be a commitment that the the academic component mm -hmm. will remain in place. Yeah. I think, and we have to be careful of that because that, you know, we can cuss and discuss everything that's happening. People are frustrated. We won't lose college athletics unless we disengage from the academic component. Yeah. And then if we do, it's, it's no yeah. longer colleges. And, and, and at that point in time, the business model, this business model, yeah. there's no corporation in the world that would ever employ the business model yeah. in college athletics. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, and, and the NFL doesn't, the mm -hmm. pro sports organizations don't. Yeah. And so I, I, I think we have to be really careful about, uh, you know, I always worry about who's looking out for the greater good of this, because mm -hmm. commissioners aren't. Commissioners yeah. are looking out for their leagues, IDs are looking out for their schools. The NCAA is, is, has almost been rendered toothless yeah. by, the, by the legal system <laughs> yeah. in looking out for the, for the so, but who is looking out for the good yeah. of the whole? Uh, because if, if we have to start making biz, specific business de mm -hmm. decisions, uh, there is one sport at the University of Washington that cash flows. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at it purely from a business standpoint, uh, yeah. That's that's not what we want. Not a great to. business model, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. right. I, I always thought it was so strange that not strange, but just an issue that you know, for college football, as big of a business as, as it is and as important as it is, there's really not no governing person over it. I mean, you may, you can say that <clears throat> the the commissioners are in charge, but they're also in charge of you know the the Big Ten commissioners are also in charge of softball and, right. <laughs> and swimming right. and then you got the NCAA but are, are they really in charge anymore you know they, there's not a you know a commissioner of college football do you there's, think there needs to be one in place nope well, because you know we wouldn't give them the authority yeah how many you know, we just had it happen in the Pac-12 we're seeing it in the ACC right now uh, mm -hmm. there was just in the Big Ten Institute member institutions suing their conference yeah. for trying to, to to follow the rules that that the conference has put yeah. in place. We we don't have the patience or the tolerance to do anything except sue anybody that just <laughs> doesn't have the opinion or the belief yeah. that we do. And sometimes we do that not because we believe it's the right thing, but we have a, a fan base, yeah, right? We, to, have, to. we yeah. have constituents we have to satisfy. Mm. I, I don't think there is a human being in, in the world. And you, you can say Nick Saban may be the, the John Wooden of our generation, mm. but I don't know that you put Nick Saban in there and give him unilateral authority and people are going to accept it because it's Nick Saban, you know, or, or whoever it is. Uh, people are going to challenge that. Yeah. I don't see the commissioners being willing to give up the authority that they have. Yeah. Uh, That's a good point. You know, yeah. and, and, and until and unless it becomes conferences go away and every institution is its own. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you have an AFC and an NFC, yeah. If, yeah. if you look at it from that standpoint, but they still have a, a designee who makes decisions yeah. for all of, all of those institutions. And, and we don't have the, the homogeny that the NFL does. Yeah, true. You know, uh, forget salary caps and everything else, but everything's the same. Yeah. You know, the variance true. in talent is, is yeah. this. Yeah. We're, we're, we have different academic yeah. philosophies we have so many different things the the lack of uh, homogeneity i guess it may be the uh, part of the problem with us because yeah. we've always tried to regulate down to the lowest common denominator so no mm -hmm. one was aggrieved but by doing that we really harmed those who were way above yeah. the, that denominator uh, i was i was a little surprised by your answer but you just convinced me that we don't we don't need a college football <laughs> commissioner um, um, I like this. We're getting into the weeds here. So my next question is about uh, the the calendar in college football. Just yeah. the recruiting calendar. There's a lot, been a lot of talk about it, and yeah. it all kind of, especially when you're playing in the playoff, like like you guys are, which for most teams that's not that's not an issue. But you do have bowl games, but you got the combination right after the season of the portal of NIL, of recruiting, of signing day, of getting ready for bowl game, staff turnover, dealing with all that. Uh, do you see any changes needed or coming to the college football calendar? Today's episode is brought to you by Ekron Athletics. Listen, you guys know I was an injury prone player during my playing career. Felt like I was hurt having surgery every other season. Looking back on it, I wasn't recovering the right way. So now in my post playing career, I made it a mission to figure out how to recover best. And that's when I found Ekron Athletics. Their B37S percussion massage gun, this thing right here, has 
changed the way I recover after big workouts. I wish I had this thing when I was playing. It was named the best overall massage gun by GQ, Sports Illustrator, and other trusted publications. I'm telling you, every player and athlete out there should be using this thing to recover after workouts and games and to get loose before games and practices. And even if you're not playing sports and using it before the gym and after the gym, I use it when I'm sitting at home watching college football every Saturday. I mean, this thing is beautiful. I love it. I take it with me everywhere I go, even on the road when I travel. Oh, and the B37S massage gun is not just about a quick fix. It's got a long battery life and it comes with a lifetime warranty guaranteeing this thing lasts much longer than my football career did. Whether you're a current athlete, a former athlete, or just an everyday person trying to stay in shape, you need to try the B37S percussion gun from Ekron Athletics. Go to EkronAthletics.com today and start recovering faster and moving easier. That's Ekron Athletics and use promo code NEXTUP for 25% off your purchase. That's E-K-R-I-N Athletics.com with promo code NEXTUP for 25% off your purchase. Uh, do you see any changes needed or coming to the college football calendar? So, you know, I, I was on the, when I left Tulane, I'd been on the football oversight committee for mm -hmm. four years. I was on the Constitution Committee, the Transformation Committee. Yeah. We actually just reviewed spend a year reviewing and modifying the football calendar. Yeah. And, you know, I, I would say some of the things people want, you know, some, what, what could it be better mm -hmm. if some people wanted a high school signing date, you know, any time in the fall, mm -hmm. let's just say it's August or September, I will promise you kids will quit playing high school football. They'll yeah, sign and true. they'll opt out of high school football, if <laughs> yeah. you will. And our coaches will, some of our coaches will encourage that. Mm -hmm. It will be terrible for high school football. Yeah. Sure. So. You know, move in signing date ahead of the end of the high school season. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that works. As long as we have academics um, mm -hmm. at play here, and as I said, I think we always will. Yeah. The ability to transfer at semesters because of spring football. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't want anybody to transfer, get rid of spring football. Yeah. Then there's no incentive to go somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. finish out your academic year, yeah. and all this stuff can happen in, in May. We're getting rid of spring football. Yeah. So people want to get to the school where they're going to play next fall so they can learn the offense, right? Mm -hmm. And so kids need that path at the end yeah. of the current season in order to go. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would say this, you know, coaches have had the ability to leave at the end of the season forever. <laughs> so. and, and, you know, is it inconvenient? Is it tough? Does it set you back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Uh, I, I struggle a little bit with us complaining that now that the kids can do what the coaches have always done yeah and we need to change the model so it can't happen yeah. again yeah that's a good point um when you're looking for a new head coach in any sport uh that, that's ultimately one of the biggest parts of your job right yeah. is hiring new coaches what are the things you look for when you're when you're looking for new coaches well one it's who who can you be a partner with mm -hmm. Because the whole thing, you know, there's going to be good times and bad times, and you're going to be attached to the hip mm -hmm. in both of those. Yeah. So you got to have a good partner. You got to have somebody who culturally uh, will have a run a program that you'll be proud of mm -hmm. in the, in the worst of times. Yeah. In the best of times, people overlook a lot of things, <laughs> but in the worst of times, they look for the bad. Yeah. Uh, you want somebody who's run a, a good program mm -hmm. who respects the the players. You know, for me personally. Uh, I want somebody who's proven they can win. You know, it's, uh, I have, if you look at, from me over the years, I've, I've hired many more sitting head coaches than I have assistant coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I wouldn't hire an assistant coach tomorrow. Yeah. But, you know, one of the challenges for assistants coming up is getting out of the weeds and all those things you gotta do that aren't coaching anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, you may, you know, I never X and O anybody. Yeah. Uh, I figured if, if they've had enough success that they're across the they table from you, they know it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they sure, certainly know it better than I do. Yeah. But, you know, learning the culture piece, learning, you know, can they be the CEO of, of a program, mm -hmm. essentially? And, yeah. hey, I, I ask if, if, if something bad happens and I give them scenarios of what bad happens, what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of a lot of eyes on us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if... And if it, there's a misstep and the player is an important player. Are, yeah. we, are we willing to take care of that misstep? Yeah. You had a lot of success at Tulane, especially in football. You mentioned it, the, the Cotton Bowl. Uh, what, what's something that you learned from your time at Tulane that you've taken with you and implemented here at Washington? Uh, There's a lot. Probably. Yeah, what's probably not thing? much that I put in, but you know, the, the value of patience. Yeah. And when, 
You know, and I, I told Willie last year when he was talking to Georgia Tech, I said, you know, you, hurricane or not, for us, uh, we went two and ten the year before the Cotton Bowl, mm-hmm. and you don't go two and ten in year six and survive any place. Yeah, but True. understanding <laughs> that that there were reasons, mm-hmm. and you know, if you're around it every day and you're walking in the hallways every day and you're in the locker room every day, you know sometimes whether the program's broken or whether mm-hmm. it's not broken and there's an aberration. Mm-hmm. But the ability to have the patience and not get caught up in fandom, mm-hmm. uh, and me myself, I'm, you know, I think I'm as may be as big a fan as anybody, but I can't make emotionally yeah. charged decisions yeah. like a fan may want you to at, yeah. when, when things are tough. So yeah. patience yeah. and convincing, finding ways to convince other people to have patience yeah. when things aren't going right. Patience seems like something that's been lost in college football. It has. <laughs> it has, yeah. Uh, you know, but I'd say these, these monster contracts, yeah. uh, sometimes that may be a forced patience. Yeah. You know, the, the yeah. people aren't making decisions, right? And, yeah. and uh, that, that's good or it's bad, but, but uh, you know, there's a lot of people, we have a lot of constituents. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that have to have buy into what you do. Mm-hmm. And they also have to understand what's going on. Yeah. From my president to my board, to our donors, to my staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I, I, one of the things I've, I've never believed and I never evaluate a coach publicly, yeah. um, you know, good or bad, yeah. uh, but internally, uh, have very open, transparent discussions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I need everybody uh, inside the department understanding what the messaging is when we do need the patients yeah. and if they make their connections with people. Yeah, uh, you just mentioned massive contracts. Uh, <laughs> how have uh, the contract discussions gone with Coach DeBoer? Well, they were good, you know, it, we're in a good place. And I've said yeah. this, you know, you, you know Coach is coach is a little bit of an anomaly in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You know, I think as people see, you know, uh, the good guy side of things, right? Yeah. And, and everybody's got an agent, but mm. you know, to say I'm I'm going to sit on this, um, mm. you know, let's, you know, me, he, I heard Kalen say this. And it's a great line. He says, "I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious," <laughs> and and uh, you know, so yeah. so not interrupting, you know, the what's flow, going on yeah. right now, and knowing that we're in a good place. You know, we've talked and gotten to where you know I, mm-hmm. we probably could have done something a month ago had had he been motivated to get it done at the time, but yeah. but keeping the focus where he wanted the focus and we'll get to the contract. Yeah. But you know, it's we'll we'll do a deal that that, that UW's never seen before, mm-hmm. you know, and, and not that it's gonna be an unprecedented deal in college athletics history, but but uh, you know, uh, we're breaking new ground, yeah. uh, and and uh, I'll look forward to getting it done so people quit asking me about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had to, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not talking about you, you know. But but uh, uh, a lot of people yeah. say, you know, boy, we should extend it. Well, yeah, yeah we yeah. should, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks I mean, for the advice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But uh, you know, uh, the market is what the market is, yeah. and and uh, you know, and I, we talked about how do you keep coaches at the very beginning of this conversation, mm-hmm. and the contract is one piece of it. Uh, and, and I think we're going to get the other pieces done, that support yeah. for success, and the contract will get done, and, and uh, he'll have everything in place for him to, to yeah. keep this thing rolling. On a little bit of a lighter note, how are you enjoying Seattle? I, I saw it for the first time this offseason. I mean, it's a beautiful place. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It is unbelievable. And, you know, it's interesting with everybody coming here and, mm-hmm. and seeing New, New Orleans. <laughs> Most of the folks in, in, at, That's right. in this is your, this is your ha- had not been here, and yeah. so... You know, they're like, oh boy, it's warm out today, it's beautiful. And I said, well, you know, in the, in the summer, you know, when it's 82 yeah. degrees at night with 98% humidity, I said, I'll yeah. be looking at Mount Rainier too, yeah. you know. Yeah. So uh, uh, it, it, it is beautiful and, and uh, you know, and I, I've been there a few times, mm-hmm. but uh, the people are wonderful. Yeah. You know, and I'm a Midwest guy and Kalen's a Midwest guy, Grubbs from Iowa, mm-hmm. same as I'm from Iowa. And, and you know, and I think the the people that I've run across very much of a Midwestern feel. Mm-hmm. You know, good work ethic, um, you know, a lot of respect for one another. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's it's a good place. It's it's going to be a great place to raise our family. You know, yeah. we have a nine to ten year old, and you know, one day they look forward to it, and yeah. and the next day they don't, right? Because yeah. they're moving away from friends. But it's going to be a great place for them to grow up. Yeah. Uh, w- when you look at the future for UW football. For, you know, obviously it's one thing to have the success this season and be a top four team in the country. I was just talking to Coach DeBoer saying, you know, that that jump from 
top 50 to top 25, it's a big jump. But then top 25, top 10 is even bigger. But to get in the top four and stay there is a yeah. huge jump. What do you think still needs to happen to, to be a top four program in the country consistently year after year? Well, you're not always going to get the breaks. Yeah, true. Yeah. You know, uh, you know we, we have a generational quarterback. Yeah. You're not always going to have a generational <laughs> quarterback. So, you know, I, I think uh, from what I've seen of the staff, we're going to put the kids we have in a position to have success. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, a lot of us, you know, I, I look at, you know, Georgia and, and mm -hmm. you know, that it's obviously a top, yeah. maybe the top program in the country from what they've yeah. done in the last five years. And, and they lose one game in three yeah. years, right? And all <laughs> of a sudden playoffs. they're out of the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a fine line. Mm -hmm. And that four is going to be 12. True. And, yeah. and I think as, as we look, how, how do we stay in the top 12? Mm -hmm. And I think the Big Ten is an important thing, uh, a really important thing from this standpoint. The consensus in the country uh, in, after the month of September was the Pac-12 was the best league in the country. Crazy, huh? By November, <laughs> yeah. right? And we started playing one another. Now everybody dissed the yeah. Pac-12. Mm -hmm. And so the ability, I think, to play in, in Eastern yeah. and Central time zones on a regular basis, uh, even if our team doesn't change its level of performance one bit, mm -hmm. our credibility and our, revel uh, our relevance will be higher yeah. because of where we're playing. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think that's going to be a big, big deal in, in, in us keeping that position in the mm -hmm. top 12. Yeah. And again, it doesn't mean we're changing anything about the program. We're not recruiting yeah. better guys or, or all of a sudden the coaches take a class, right, and get smarter. <laughs> yeah. But just, just the, the move to the Big Ten is really going to help us. Yeah, it's got to be big from an exposure on the media side too, right? I mean, the Big Ten with the New Deal with uh, CBS and NBC yeah. and NBC primetime games. Uh, you know, just to think, for a while, it was been hard to watch Pac-12 TV sometimes and watch why. I mean, you got, sometimes there's not, nothing against a lot of those guys. They have great announcers, and I love some, some of those guys. But they're, you know, you got USC, UW playing on, you can't watch it on the East Coast. Everyone's trying to watch it. It's got to be big. And was that uh, obviously an exciting part for you guys to have, the, have more exposure? Yeah, you know, the, the TV world in college athletics has changed so much over yeah. the last decade. And, you know, when Jim Delaney founded the Big Ten Network, it was like, People were fuming mad because yeah. they were going to have to subscribe to some new channel, yeah. and and then that became it's basically the template. Yeah. Yeah. But no other really network has succeeded mm. other than the Big Ten Network, mm. right? So, um, and the over the air versus streaming and, and everything else had changed, and I think we're in a, a little bit of a tumult in the TV market right now. What's yeah. what's next? Three yeah. years ago we thought digital, everything was right. going to be digital. Yeah. Now I'm not so sure, yeah. right? So. Because so, they, uh, they had the Apple deal, right? That, Possibly. Yeah, yeah. That, that's right. So, you know, timing is everything. Whether yeah. you hit the market at a high or whether you hit the market, it's like buying a house, right? Yeah. If you bought it yeah. three months ago and the interest rates were 7.5%, yeah. you're trying now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, ex the exposure is really important, yeah. uh, you know, without a doubt. But that TV landscape is going to continue to evolve yeah. uh, and, and continue to change. But when you're in Seattle, you, you want people in the Midwest and the East Coast having access sure. to watch you yeah. and and remain credible and remain in that public eye yeah. so it's a big deal yeah uh, I guess we'll wrap up we're filming this the day before the Sugar Bowl um, so obviously probably the or one of the biggest games in program history right it's, it's a it's a huge opportunity uh, what are you looking forward to seeing the most in this in that, in that game you know uh, I think of the four teams that are left mm -hmm. there's probably not much difference in any of the four. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose Vegas would tell you that's the case right now too when yeah. you start to look at it. Don't make mistakes. Yeah. You know, and, and where I like from our standpoint, and you know, you can hit the bookmark and come back and say this is good or it's bad. <laughs> you know, and Kalen's talked about this, we have nine sixth year players. Yeah. We've got a lot of guys that have played a lot of football, have a lot of maturity, um, that have have managed when things go, go bad, have yeah. managed to not let it affect the next play. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, things are going to go bad. You just hope it goes bad for your opponent yeah. more than it goes bad for you. Right. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried about our ability to perform. Yeah. You know, I just, I've seen it over and over and over again. And I know we're as healthy as, as we can possibly be. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you make mistakes, you're going to lose a game. Mm -hmm. And that's true for any of the four of us. Yeah. Having your quarterback helps a lot too, right? Having having, uh, <laughs> having the best quarterback in the field uh, is, yeah. is, uh, is a nice uh, comfort yeah. uh, 
to, to all of us. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, appreciate all your time. This is a great conversation. I think people really enjoy it. UW fans yeah. will enjoy it. College football fans will like it. Uh, and congrats on the new job. Yeah, I'm excited, excited to have you guys in the Big Ten. I'm a Big Ten guy, so I'm, I'm excited. Well, you know, growing up in Iowa, I grew up a Big Ten guy. Yeah. And, yeah. and so in, in some ways, you know, while I'm coming home to, yeah. to, to New Orleans here, I'm also coming home to the Big Ten, yeah. at least to the footprint. So I'm, I'm looking forward to what lies ahead for yeah. us. Appreciate the time. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Wasn't too hard, right? Oh. That was good. <laughs>